We've done so much on practicing factoring this week that let's go ahead and take a little uh, look at how we can use factoring to solve an equation. So the first thing you want to do is to be able to solve by factoring. You want to make sure that you have everything equal to zero. So we have everything on one side, and now we're going to factor this. Which method are we going to use? We have three terms, and we don't have a number in front of our x squared term. So we're going to factor using short or quick key factoring. So let's take a look, and we multiply the number out front by the number at the end. 1 times negative 14, our key number is going to be negative 14, and we want to factor, we want to find factors that total our middle term, and what's our middle term here? Our middle term would be negative 13. So now let's list the factors out. And there they are right there. I just went ahead and listed all the factors. Again, you can use your calculator and the y equals in the table to get this list of factors. Go back and check out that video if you're unsure of how to do that. But now we want to find ones that add to negative 13. And we can see negative 14 plus 1 does add to negative 13. So these are going to be the factors that we want to use. And when we did long key factoring, if you had a number out front, you had to break this middle term up. But we can use the short key method. So we know that this is going to factor into x minus 14 and x plus 1 equals 0. And now what you're going to do is since we have two things that multiply up to 0, we're going to use the principle of zero products. And I'm going to talk about what that is over here for a little bit. So I have two numbers, a times b. And if I know I have a times b equals 0, we know that either a or 0 or b or 0 is 0 or both. So we know either a equals 0 or b equals 0. Think about it. Any, can you think of any two numbers that would multiply to give you something to 0? Any two non-zero numbers? No. Either one of these or the other has to be 0 for the, mul the product of them to be 0. Why do I care about this? Because now what I can do is I can set each of these factors equal to 0. So we can do x minus 14 equals 0, and we can do x plus 1 equals 0. Now we're just going to solve these, plus 14, plus 14. These cancel out, and we get x is equal to 14. And then we subtract 1, subtract 1, and we get x is equal to negative 1. So our solutions are x is equal to 14, and negative 1. Let's take a look at a little, diff a little more difficult one down here. 3r squared plus 4r minus 1. So what we want to start by doing is we want to start by seeing is everything equal to 0 here? No, it's not. So we're going to start this problem by adding 1 to both sides. So we are going to get 3 r squared plus 4r plus 1 equals 0. And now you can see we have a three-term trinomial, and we see we have a number out front. Do we have any GCF? No, there's nothing we can factor out, no common factors. So what we're going to do is we're going to now find our key number. So our key number is we have 3 times 1, our key is 3, and we want factors that add to our middle term, which is 4. So here are our factors. We're looking for factors that add to 4. So 3 plus 1 is 4, right? Now, unlike the one above, you see we have this number in front of our squared term, so we can't we can't just go ahead and factor that. We have to break it up and do factor by grouping. So this is going to factor into 3r squared, and then we're going to use these over here. It's going to be plus 3r plus 1r plus 1 equals 0. And now we're going to group our first two terms together, and we're going to group our second two terms together, and we're going to factor by grouping. What can we take out of our first two terms? We can take out a... 3r. It's like dividing each of these by 3r, dividing this by 3r. These are going to cancel. r squared divided by r is just r, plus 3r divided by 3r. That gives us just a 1. Anything divided by itself is just 1.
And now in our second two terms, we have plus 1r plus 1. I can take out, I can't really take anything out. We're just going to take out a positive 1. Um, and then we're going to take out, divide each of these by 1. Sorry about that. Let me fix that. So it's like dividing each by 1. And what's going to be left inside the parentheses? 1r divided by 1 is just r. 1 divided by 1 is 1. You can see that up here, we this already matched what was here, so we just took out a positive 1. And we still have the equals 0. We're just working on factoring this. And now we can see that each of these terms have an r plus 1 in it. So we are going to write the r plus 1 out front. And then I'm going to open the parentheses. That's like dividing this term by r plus 1. That's like dividing this term by r plus 1. These cancel out, and we're going to be left with 3r. Um, and then these cancel out as well, and we're going to be left with a plus 1. And we still have the equals 0. Now that we got the factors, we're going to st again use that principle of zero products. And we are now just going to set each of these equal to 0. So we're going to set each of these equal to 0. And we're going to get r plus 1 equals 0. And we're going to get 3r plus 1 equals 0. And we're going to solve these separately. Minus 1, minus 1. We get r is equal to negative 1. Here we minus 1, minus 1. We get 3r equals negative 1. Divide by 3 divide by 3, and we get r is equal to negative 1 third. So our answers are going to be r is equal to negative 1 and negative 1 third.